Welcome to the EEV blog. I'm your host, Dave Jones, and this is episode number 21. Yes, it's the unusual oscilloscope phenomenon. People can't get enough of this. I've had everyone from Edison to damn Elvis contact me saying, Dave, you've got to get to the bottom of this. It's too mysterious. We want to see more tests. We want to see, we want to do this, we want to do that. And, well, okay, I'm happy to oblige. So here we go. There was a whole bunch of um, industry uh, RF guys all claiming that um, that you know it was this it was the um, actual loop on the end here that was doing that was actually picking up the signal and I got it all wrong. But I proved that wasn't the case in the second video. This has nothing to do with it. You can pick it up with just a coax, as I demonstrated, or just the probe, or the probe shorted right at the tip, a proper RF short with some um, alfoil. Now I said I've seen this phenomenon not only in my own lab but in um, you know all sorts of other labs over the years and all sorts of places with all sorts of different types of oscilloscopes. But people really don't want to and also, also, and also different types of probes. But people don't want to take my word for it. They want some more tests. They want me to use a real oscilloscope. They want me to use a real known probe under, you know, uh, better conditions. So that's it. I've got a Tektronix TDS 3032B, a 300 megahertz um, Tektronix scope. You know, it's not the top end, but it's a pretty decent scope. I'm sure everyone will agree. So I hope I don't get any complaints this time. 300 megahertz analog bandwidth, 2.5 gig samples per second, because some people think it might be some sampling artifacts or something like that. And people think that I won't get the, um, you know, the 120 odd megahertz signal on here. Well, let's find out. There are also people who wanted um, more details on what oscilloscope probe I'm using. They want me to use a real one. So okay, I got the um, I got the best name brand uh, one I could get to hand. Sorry, it's a Tektronix P2200. It's a 200 megahertz passive um, switchable probe. Okay, pretty standard bit of kit. Um, and hopefully I don't get any complaints over this one. Right, here we go. I've set this up exactly the same as before. I've grounded it in the horrible non-RF kind of way just to give you a benchmark. Here we go. Sit this down here, single sequence trigger, boing, stand up, and there we go. Check it out. That's uh, 0.5 volts per division, okay? That's not, comp that's not times 10 compensated, okay? So that's um, uh, 0.5 volts per division. Okay, now if I bring up the uh, cursors on that, you can see it's about 140 megahertz, okay? 100, roughly 140 megahertz for that impulse, and that's typically what I get regardless of the oscilloscope. Doesn't matter which oscilloscope it is, doesn't matter which probe, it doesn't matter how I ground it. It's, it's usually about 100 and, 120 plus minus, you know, 20 megahertz or something like that. It's always pretty much within that band. Okay, let's try it again, but this time I've got the alfoil short on top of the probe. Okay, so let's give it a go. Put the probe down. Trigger. I've changed the voltage scale because I know it's going to be lower amplitude this time. Okay, we're down to 50 hilly volts per division. So let's try that. And bingo, look what we've got. 50 millivolts per division and lower amplitude but it's still there and if you uh, call up the cursors once again it's roughly it's the same uh, time base so um, you know roughly uh, there it is again 140 odd megahertz now I know what you're thinking a lot of people are going to say Dave you're not thinking fourth dimensionally this scope has a 50 ohm input terminator option okay let's turn that on and see what happens and I've triggered and let's try it again Bingo, there we go. 50 ohm input terminator. And I know what you're gonna say again, Dave, we wanna see it with that coax cable, 50 ohm terminated at both ends and the 50 ohm terminator on. Okay, let's do that. Okay, here we go. The f standard 50 ohm coax again, 50 ohm terminator. The scope is terminated in 50 ohms as well. Let's give it a try. Trigger and no, didn't get it that time. Let's try it again. Bingo. There we go. 
There it is. Once again, this is a rather unusual shape again, but once again, there's an impulse there. And I know what you're thinking again. Dave, this is unrealistic. No one's going to generate this amount of static charge in their lab. You haven't taken proper ESD precautions. Now, I think I mentioned this in the first vlog. I've seen this with an anti-static coat. So, to prove it, anti-static coat. Let's give it a go. Okay, here we are. I've got my proper anti-static lab coat. This is a top quality lab coat. I've got my wrist strap. Okay, got my wrist strap. I'm going to actually, the um, oscilloscope actually has a grounding uh, terminal on the front. I'm going to plug the wrist strap into the oscilloscope grounding terminal. And I'm using a proper uh, Tektronix Pro. I'm using a 300 megahertz Tektronix oscilloscope. Pretty good one. I've got it a, a nice alfoil short on the end of the probe. Let's give it a go. Single shot and bingo. Complete with any static coat and wrist strap. Check it out. You still don't believe this thing's an issue? That's 50 millivolts per division. There you go. Told ya. Now, uh, a couple of people have mentioned that um, it could be something to do with the uh, anti-ground, uh, sorry, the, yeah, the anti-ground loop uh, circuitry used inside some decent oscilloscopes, almost. Uh, now, this could be the case. It could have a factor as well. And it's most likely um, an issue. So what we're going to do is we're going to 50 ohm input terminate the scope, and I'm just going to connect just a clip lead onto the uh, the uh, case of that, which is the ground, and let's give that a try, shall we? Bingo, there it is. Check it out, five, 10 millivolts per division. Okay, there we go, at a roughly that 140, no, let's, yeah, about 140 megahertz again. Now I know people aren't going to be happy until I try it with a direct alfoil short on the input. So let's let's see if we can get anything. We may not, so I'll turn the volts per division down, five millivolts per division, and let's give that a go. Bingo, look at that. That is a direct alfoil short on the input, as you can see, five millivolts per division, but it's much higher in frequency this time much much higher now that's um you know there's there's something else happening there as well there's something else going on i think so but there you go you can still get an input and impulse directly shorted on the input go figure yeah i know what you're thinking you know five millivolts per division it's not much it's naff all but you know if you're measuring your signals you can get these impulses that's the whole point of this blog, me, uh, you know, talking about this oscilloscope phenomenon, is that when you're measuring circuits, you've got to be careful because you can get impulses on the input, which are due to just, you know, um, you know, static uh, impulses or some other impulses directly into the uh, test probe that can make it look like, uh, you know, it's it's your signal at fault when it's not. So be careful of it. So I hope that's uh, whet the appetite of the RF guys out there. I hope it gets them fired up again about exactly what's happening here. Because I'm not going to try and... Uh, I'm, I'm not game enough to gonna try and explain uh, anti-ground input circuitry when I don't actually, you know, know exactly what's happening inside this particular unit. But it happens very similar across most oscilloscopes I've used. It doesn't discriminate. So there you go, more controversy. Go for it, guys. Right, now just as an extra bonus to show you what can happen on any oscilloscope, I'll give you another data point to work with, fellas. So here we go, I've got my Rigol DS1052E. It's only 50 megahertz, but this sucker picks it up as well. Let's give it a go. There you go. Bingo. And the frequency is around about 120 megahertz. Once again, magic with the alfoil shorted pro a lot of people have asked what's this crow probe is it what does crow mean well um uh, crow is cathode ray oscilloscope it's what we australians call an oscilloscope so this is a crow 
in Australia. This is a crow probe, so I hope I cleared that up.